We all know how the textbook drug sting goes. A cop poses as a buyer, and then they make the shady deal, and boom, lights go on, people come out of the woodwork, and the bad guy's busted. In Sunrise, Florida, they do it in the exact opposite way, and the cops are making millions and millions off it. Here's what they're doing. The cops aren't the buyers. They are instead the sellers of dope. And at least one kilo of real cocaine that they're using is a part of the deal. They even let the criminals sample it, have a little taste test. That's how they're luring big drug dealers into their quiet, peaceful little town. And the best part is the cops get to keep everything the dealers bring with them. The cash for the deal, the cars, the jewelry they have on, the watches, their cell phones, their computers, anything. Anything of value. They have to forfeit it. Those cops have brought in nearly $6 million from the operation in just 2011 and 2012, and it is all perfectly legal. So how on earth can they get away with this? Megan Omas is the Sun Sentinel reporter behind the six-month investigation. She's joining us live now to talk about it. Megan, when I read this, the first thing I thought was, this sounds like textbook entrapment, but it isn't necessarily. How is it legal? Well, I think if you ask a lot of different attorneys, they'll give you different opinions on whether exactly it is legal. I think one of the main problems is that the police offer cocaine for sale at um, bargain prices. They're offering uh, deals to people that they lure in, for example, buy one kilo, get one free. And some courts have found that particularly um, appalling or um, as, as bad government conduct. Um, but I, as I understand it as well, other lawyers have said you have to look at the circumstances in the the entirety um, regarding the person's predisposition if they really wanted to buy cocaine or not or were lured into the deal um, by these police and um, a cadre of informants they have working for them. And so we talked about those millions that they've been hauling in. They got to spend a lot to make this happen. This is a, a huge overtime operation. They got to pay a lot of these informants. And I guess one of these gorgeous brunette informants has been paid about $800,000. One cop's made about a quarter million in overtime. And yet the police will say they're putting the bad guys away. But Megan, I looked at some of the numbers. They're not putting that many bad guys away. Right. We looked at a hundred of the cases of the arrests that they made, and while about 40 cases are still pending, they have uh, many cases were dropped, at least a dozen or so cases were dropped. They have many cases where the guys were given probation or very slight sentences. We only found two cases in which um, the people got the minimum mandatory sentence of 15 years in prison, and in one of those cases it was because um, the police and the prosecutors felt the man didn't help them uh, become an informant in a sufficient style and in the other case it was a Philadelphia woman who um, she fled so she got 30 years but she's not in jail because she took off it's a fascinating story and you did some really good work on that it's a long read and all of it is is very intriguing Megan Omas thanks for joining us appreciate it thank you